All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson seven. And in this lesson, we're gonna be using place value disks to represent the whole two digit multiplying by one digit kind of multiplication problems. For example, like 23 times five, right? That's two digit by one digit. Uh, not only are we gonna be using the place value disks, but we're also gonna be using that understanding to help students understand the traditional standard algorithm, which is an, indeed the goal, ultimately, uh, but we're gonna get there through teaching students logical number sense understanding, uh, as opposed to just saying, here's the rule and let's, let's multiply and do practice problems for three weeks. Uh, we're gonna try and teach students so that they actually understand what's going on. So we're going to take this three times 24 and we're gonna solve it in two different ways. Once using the place value chart, and at the same time, we're going to show what it would look like using um, that standard algorithm. So the first thing we're going to do is model 24. So what is 24 going to look like? Well, there's two tens and one, two, three, four ones. So there's our 24 that we've modeled. Now, because it says we're supposed to be multiplying it by three, that means we need to see three rows of this. So there's one, here's another one, one, two, three, four, and here's our third one, one, two, and one, two, three, four. So this says three groups of 24, and here's our three groups of 24. Um, and so the idea is, let's write that down over here. Let's say, okay, here's our 24 times three. Now let's take a look at it. What do we have? Well, right here, we have three groups of four ones. So this is 12 ones. So we have 12, and that's because we had three times four. All right. And now what do we have over here? Well, we have six tens. Well, what's six tens? Well, that's 60. And that, why do we have 60? Because we have three times 20. Three times two tens. So now what do we have all together? Well, we're gonna need to do some adding and regrouping, aren't we? So the idea would be any time you have 10, uh, let's see, 10 right here, Ooh. 10 of a number of 10 dots in one column, that means you can cache those 10 dots in for a dot in the next column over. So that means these dots are no longer here, and we're only left with these two dots in the ones column. And then how many tens do we have now? Well, we had the original six, plus this new one that we just regrouped, so we now have seven tens. So let's take a look over here. So how many ones do we have? Well, we end up with just two ones. And then how many tens do we have? One ten plus six tens gives us seven tens. So you can see that there are our answers match. They're both 72. Now, parents and teachers, the thing I want you to notice here is this is using a technique called partial products. We have not, this is not the standard algorithm yet. We are going to be getting there, uh, but not quite yet. So let's do another practice of this one. So here, we are going to eventually do the more of a standard pro, uh, algorithm over here. It's called this partial products method. But first, let's model it. Okay, so we're going to model 34. So we've got three tens and four ones because that's what it says so, right here, 34. So there's our 34, and this says we're supposed to have four groups of them. So we need another group, and another group, and a fourth group. So now we have our four groups of 34, all right? And so now what, do we, what did we end up getting here? Well, we started with four ones, but then we times it by four. 
So how many ones do we have? Well, we now have 16 ones. And how did we get that? Well, we did 4 times 4. That's how we got 16 ones. And then over here in the tens, how many tens do we have? Well, we have 12 tens. That's because we started with 3 tens, and then we multiplied by 4. So we ended up with 12 tens. Well, 12 tens is 120. That's because we did 4 times 30. And now we're going to do some, oh, let's, let's go over here. And let's do some regrouping over here. So we know that any time you have 10 in one column, that counts as uh, you can group those together or bundle those together. So here are 10 ones. So those 10 ones can be bundled together to equal a 10, which means they're no longer here because we've bundled them together for 1 in the tens column, plus we could do it again. Look at that, so we've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these 10 right here can be bundled together, so these 10 tens can be bundled to equal 100, which means they're no longer here. So what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 1 in the hundreds place. We end up with 3 in the tens place. And we end up with 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, in the ones place. So we end up with 136. Now let's go back over here to our partial products method, and let's see what happens here. Well, let's add the ones together. So we have 6 ones plus 0 ones. That gives us 6 ones. We have 1 10 plus 2 tens, that gives us 3 tens, and then we have no hundreds plus 100 equals 100, and really I should put that plus sign there to make it obvious that we're adding them together. And so we end up with 136 in both places. So teachers, again, this method over here, classic method called the partial products method. It's not the American standard algorithm, but it's a really nice, beautiful technique that wonderfully connects this place value chart with a little bit more of an abstract, easy to use technique. And one more example. So we're going to do 5 times 42, which of course means we're going to have, let's see, 42 times 5 right here. And let's model it. So we're going to start by modeling that 42. So 42 is going to look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. There's 42. And this 5 says we're supposed to have 5 of those groups. So we already have 1. So here's a second group. There's a third group. A fourth group. And finally, a fifth group. So, how many ones do we end up having? Well, we ended up having 2 times 5 is 10 ones. And so we're going to write that down over here. We end up with 10 ones. How did we get that? We did 5 times 2. And then, let's take a look at our tens. Well, how many tens do we have? Well, we had 4 tens. We multiplied by 5, so we end up with 20 tens. Well, 20 tens is 200, and we got that because we did 5 times 40. 5 times 40. Now, if we were to just continue with these partial products algorithm, no ones plus no ones gives us no ones. One ten plus zero tens gives us one ten, and no hundreds plus two hundreds gives us two hundreds. So our partial product says we're supposed to have the answer of two hundred and ten. Let's go over here and see if we can see two hundred and ten. So we know anytime you have ten of a number, 
10 dots that you can cash that in, bundle it in. So we've got 10 ones right here. So those 10 dots, 10 ones, can be bundled for 110. So that means these 10 dots are no longer here because we've bundled them together to equal a 10. And then again, remember, anytime you have 10, you can bundle them together. So here's 10 tens, and here's 10 tens. So each of those can be bundled together for a dot in the hundreds place. So 10 tens equals 100, 10 tens equals another 100. So what do we end up with? Well, we have two in the hundreds place. We have just this one guy. Oh, because these guys, I forgot to cross them off. They're no longer there because we bundled them in to, uh, in place of 100. And so we end up with just one, uh, 10 left over. And we have no ones at all. So we're going to put a zero there. And that's how we know our answer is 210. Both techniques say so. Lots of words, so let's see. It says, Cindy says she found a shortcut. We're always looking for shortcuts for doing multiplication problems. When she multiplies 3 times 24, she says 3 times 4 is 12, 12 ones, or 110 and 12 ones. And then there's just two tens left in the 24, so she says, add it up. So what she's saying is, let's see, let's go back. She's saying 3 times 4 is 12 ones. So we agree with that. That's 12 ones, which can be thought of as 110 and 2 ones. And then she's saying... There's just two tens left in the 24. So she's saying, so far, all we've done is the 3 times 4, and that's how we got 12. And she's saying, now what we need to do is take this 12, uh, this 2, which is, stands for two tens, and we're going to add it, and we're going to get one ten plus two more tens gives us three tens, or thirty, and then we just add in the two, and that's how she says we get thirty-two. That's what Cindy is saying. Do we agree with this? Boy, it sure sounds like it makes sense. But let's use the um, place value chart. We've got our ones, and we've got our tens, we're also going to model it over here, 24 times 3, using partial products. So first thing, let's model 24. There's 24. There's 24. And because it says we're supposed to multiply it by 3, that means we need to have three groups of those. There's a, here's a second group, and here's a third group group. So what do we end up with? Well, how many ones do we end up with? Well, we had 4 times 3. So sure enough, that's 12, just like we had before, and we got that by doing 3 times 4. Now over here, how many tens do we end up with? Well, we had 2. We have 3 groups of them, so 2 times 3 so that ends up being six tens, which is 60. And that's because we did three times 20. And when we add those together, we end up with 72. And if you don't trust us, which you shouldn't, let's take a look. If you have 10 ones, those 10 ones can be bundled together to equal a 10. So that means those 10 ones are gone, leaving us with just these two. And then how many set, uh, tens do we have? Well, we end up with seven tens. So that ends up equaling 72. 
So we see that the answer is 72. And the idea is because here, what did, with this two tens, we actually had one, two, three rows of two tens. Whereas Cindy, she just added one group of two tens. And that's where Cindy's mistake is. She, she ended up, now teachers, she never multiplied the three times the two tens. So this is the area that she messed up on. And that wraps up fourth grade module three, lesson seven, where we're using place value disks to multiply two digits by one digit problems. We're not quite using the standard algorithm yet. We're using partial products, but eventually we're going to be getting to that standard algorithm.